Robin on my teacup. February, part two. First flowers. I'm sitting here in a dark corner of our garden and I'm near the roadside and you'll hear why in a moment. The race for survival has begun in the countryside. First the winter aconite hissed into flower under our hedge. You can see the bright yellow blobs from our house window pushing up through the dead leaves. Nothing deters them. You can see their lamp light glow whatever the weather. They seize the opportunity before the ruthless spring plants grow and crowd them out. You don't see many aconites these days, do you? When I was a little girl in Yorkshire, I remember them in the rectory garden. There were hundreds of them with their little yellow lamps running wild. They made a golden carpet. But the old rectory has been bulldozed down long ago and replaced by a smart housing estate. The houses have lovely gardens, but no aconites. They have snowdrops, though, lining the paths. Snowdrops race after aconites in the early battle for light and space, and they're drifting along on everybody's paths now. We used to have huge clumps of them flowering on the roadside here, and little children often came to pick them. There aren't as many now, and I don't think it's because the children used to pick them. I think it's because there's a lot more traffic than there used to be. The snowdrops, however, like all wildlife, will do anything to survive, and they've crept under our hedge and into our orchard. So we have them there, defiantly flowering under our fruit trees. One warm morning last week, I saw a yawning bumblebee queen, grateful for the early nectar from the aconites. Unwittingly, she took pollen from flower to flower. Soon, that means there will be little purses of black seeds and they could eventually settle on the ground and grow into seedlings. I will welcome them because aconites are precariously clinging to their place as first flowers and they're rapidly losing the race. Where did my aconites come from then? Well, I will tell you a secret I have not told anyone before. Years ago, my grandmother saw the bulldozer in the rectory gardens in Yorkshire. So she waited for dusk and then when no one was looking, she took a trowel and a paper bag and dug up the tubers and put them in her garden. She was stealing them. They are stolen aconites, really. But I suppose in one way, she saved them because they flourished in her garden. And one day she gave me a packet of little black seeds and I put them here in my garden right near the hedge. They are the grandchildren of stolen aconites from a Yorkshire rectory garden growing here in Shropshire. The bleary-eyed bumblebee I saw last week didn't mind at all when she came. She didn't mind if they were from Yorkshire or from Shropshire. She just seized the opportunity to feed nothing else mattered to her. Wildlife will stop at nothing to win the survival stakes. I've come to the end now of my whole year that I've been reading out to you about wildlife in the Shropshire garden and fields. And I have another book that I've written called Ducklings on my doorstep. And you can find that on our website, leafbyleafpress.com. And you can see some other books that we've written on that website too.
I'm going to continue on YouTube reading my book called It's Not a Boy. So don't go away, keep listening and have a look at our website. The ducklings really did nest on our doorstep. <laughs>